do y'all think healthy relationships get boring like you you're in a good relationship with a guy and you're enjoying your time or a girl it doesn't matter like you enjoy who you're with you're enjoying your time and then all of a sudden not all of a sudden but the fact that the routine is so good does it get like boring like damn we need like personally i think people who say that they're bored are actually very boring themselves it's the same way to say that someone that always needs someone around them are actually the very loneliest people to me when someone is bored of a healthy relationship there's actually more of a bigger problem with them and themselves than the actual counterpart that they're with okay sometimes please, it's cool so, like, like, oh, I need to your, get like your relationship is healthy okay so please there okay so yeah this is it's i think this really healthy. is the question for me <laughs> so yes i do have relation i mean a healthy relationship but me personally as a person i don't know if it's a gemini thing i don't know if it's me but like i like consistency does not work for me like i'm very sporadic like one minute i could do this and next minute i need to do that like a schedule does not work for me so i can't get bored if you cannot fulfill like that excitement in my life i will get bored mm. i love my healthy relationship but it's like if we do the same schedule i will get bored like we wonder why the black community is the way it is i'm not saying it's all down to black females but in this conversation i'm trying to show the problems that black females bring when it comes to the black community being the way it is consistency is the most important thing that you would want in a relationship and somehow she resents that people who are bored or find their healthy partner their good man boring is really um a sign of self-hatred because they you should be able to find fulfillment not just with him but within yourself outside of excitement you know these are feelings they're fleeting so you're a very fleeting person that's how i be y'all see it when i do it with hair i'd be like one minute i don't want to do yeah. no more. yeah i want to do this I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go into my other hobby, but it's like, or she might do too much of one style. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm sick of this. Literally, <laughs> like I cannot. No more. <laughs> yeah. I cannot do the same thing. That's literally why everybody was like, "How did you do college and cosmetology school at the same time?" Because yeah, I got was bored. Too much for me. I kept going to work and doing school at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I was like, "Let's add some, add some else to the thing." And that's how it was with the relationship. You have to keep it up. We got to go out of town. Yeah. We got to be a little free. We got to do something new in the yeah, bed. Something right, got to yeah. be different. I have a question for men. You see me living my personal life, enjoying every second of my life, unbothered. You come to me. You tell me you want a romantic relationship. You, you, you love me so much. You want us to work. You want to wife me. Okay? I allow you in my life, in my space, and give you a chance, Satan. Just for you to fuck up my mental health and destroy my inner peace. Who sent you? Who created men? Is it the devil himself? Or somewhere, somehow, men are related to Satan? Or y'all work together? Because there is no way you're gonna come from nowhere just to disturb me, just to stress me, unprovoked. Men, please stay away from Probably wondering, what does this have to do with boring relationships and good men being boring i think it has everything to do with it females who talk like this you need to understand there's a pattern there's a pattern of the type of men that they get into these relationships and situationships and there's a pattern of results meaning is peace is not what they desire peace is not what they're attracted to somehow every time you're interacting with men it's always the same outcome it's always the same toxic behavior and leaving you in the same place it's coming to the end of 2022 and i'm going to tell you the biggest lesson i learned this year is that the good guy isn't always the right guy and it sucks in fact it's up there top five worst feelings us women we have a terrible habit of doing this thing where we meet a good guy and because men as a whole are horrific we're like we have to this this is it like we should just accept the good guy 
because they're good and they're kind and they're sweet and they're nice and if we don't we feel bad about it because we're like this guy is so kind and he's so nice and like why why do I want more they want more of the type that they want which is never the nice guy which is never the good guy which is never the healthy relationship and healthy relationship can mean a lot of things to these females and a boring relationship can mean a lot of things to these females sadly enough although this just shows that even when they get what they want it's never good enough you think they would want a man that's kind and caring and that actually provides for you meanwhile they actually begin to resent you for it because it gets boring and that's what she's saying but i finally accepted this year that just because they're the good guy doesn't mean that they're the good guy for you and this is something i really struggle with because men as a whole are shit in fact i go as far as to say they're a disaster so when there is a good guy in front of me i'm like wake up be grateful but i've accepted that you're allowed to want a good guy and some being a good guy isn't enough to make him your guy and you shouldn't feel bad about that listen to me just because he's a good guy doesn't mean he's the right guy for you what does this even say about females today she's so quick to say that men are horrific disasters but what type of female is not interested in a good man what type of character are you like what, when you really hear that it makes you wonder well, what are you attracted to what actually do you want in a relationship that is beyond good because good is the best you can get for anyone so you really want to go backwards and get worse and you're so quick to talk about men yet look at yourself you are about just horrific as the men that you speak about I just wish I would have never gave my body away to men who were never going to marry me. Like, no, it was, it was never going to happen. It was never going to be you. The enemy will always send distractions your way when you don't know yourself and when you have that scar of rejection or uh, maybe you didn't have a father figure in your life and you yearn for male attention or um, male validation or just wanting to be loved by a man. The enemy will use that against you. The enemy will send a man to terrorize you not all men are the same and if you believe that i want you to pray about that because that's how the enemy wants you to keep you stuck and make you believe that you will never find a good man or a good man will never find you and that's a lie it's not the fact that you will never find a good man it's also not the fact that satan will use men to traumatize you know the real enemy first of all is yourself and second of all, there's been plenty of good men that you have come across and rejected to pick the men that traumatized you. Really, Satan didn't use anybody else but yourself and your desires and your lusts, which you never decided to work on until dating became significantly harder, which is why she's in this self-love God journey. That's not how we were supposed to be raised, figuring life out. Like we are always supposed to have a standard for every aspect of our lives. So when you don't have a standard, you'll fall for anything. Today, we are talking about relationships. Nadia, tell me how relationships should feel. Boring. <laughs> best relationship. Boring when there's no excitement. This is the best, I swear to God. Listen, I understand where she's coming from and maybe she's saying boring to um, speak to the female audience because this is their lingo but to me boring isn't supposed to be looked at as a healthy relationship a stable relationship a calm relationship a peaceful relationship why are positive things seen as boring there's a problem when you label good things so negatively. Like I said, she's probably speaking to a female audience that maybe could understand or comprehend it, but that's still an issue. You shouldn't be mixing such positive things, such a negative narrative behind it. 
Yes. It Why did. is it better than going out and going on the town, having dates all the time? And Who has an energy for that? Seriously, people. I don't. It, no, no one. You're you can right. pretend for a month or two, and then you'd be like, forget it. It's too much work. <laughs> Yes, listen, if you like in my relationship, like he works, he has a company, I work all the time. If we have to come home after that and then work more on relationship, that's so too much work. Fun? Here's another thing, which is what I was saying is a healthy relationship for these females really mean different things. Just shows you how toxic they are. But a healthy relationship for some of these females means fun and excitement. Means you take me on holiday, you buy me this and you keep me on my feet and you do all the things that I want to keep me happy. To them, that's what a healthy relationship is, which isn't healthy, to be honest. You just have a do boy that's always stroking your ego. But in her case, that's what a healthy relationship looks like. Fun. We go out of town. Like we work, work like for a month, month and a half. We're like, okay, let's get out of town. Let's go to the beach, That's to Mexico, nice. Jamaica, wherever you want to go. Like we go to Europe in a couple weeks. It, right? Of course. Listen, I'm, I'm there to... This lady is going viral for actually admitting that she divorced the love of her life for one reason, because she wanted more money. I've been divorced before. You know, my first marriage, we made all of the mistakes. Unfortunately, he passed away. So why did you guys get a divorce? Because I really wanted something different. It's very unfortunate because he was the most loving, wow. kind person. I, I had all the love and support that I could have ever wanted. But I think I went through a period wanting money. Like I wanted to be with someone and be at a different level. And I saw him work all of the time. It's, it's one thing to like work and work and work from like 4 a.m. to 10 p.m. at night, day in, day out, and still have no resources. And for me to work, do the same, and just want a different life. So, it just shows the issue that a lot of black men are dealing with when it comes to modern black females. This is a very big issue where you can be a man and you can literally provide everything for your wife and she will still desire other men for money now this is why men are beginning to actually pull away from marriage what happens is females dehumanize their husbands over money leave their relationships for money and see money more valuable than what they have and what they've built together Long story short, he wanted a different life and lifestyle mm -hmm. than he was able to provide. And so you said, you know what, this, I'm out of here, I need more money. Um, I was selfish and took advantage of a real unfortunate situation, which was he loved me and David unconditionally. Every time we saw each other, like you knew that was your soulmate. Right, wow. I mean. so he was your soulmate. I'm, he just loved you. He really did. And you broke his heart. <laughs> oh, I don't cry too. <laughs> I'll be honest, this is why I don't like female hosts. Because you always want to make females feel better about the wrong things that they're doing. In my opinion, she should feel bad and she should live with that. Because the amount of pain that that man endured for your selfish reasons is the main reason why you should cry and enjoy it for the rest of your life. Here's a little dating tip. If the guy that you're talking to is boring, tell him. Tell him that he's boring the shit out of you. Don't be shy, let him know. Be like, hey, you're kind of boring or I'm kind of bored. Or be like, are you always this dull? Like, don't be shy to be a little direct. Here's a little story time. I was once on a date with a guy and I was so bored, but I didn't even realize. I just started yawning. I probably yawned like three times and it spent out like 40 minutes and I didn't even realize until he called me out on it. He was like, you're yawning. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. But I was truly so bored because he was so interested in my life because I guess my life was way more interesting than his. And then he continued to take me out on several other dates with him. I guess he got the hint that I was kind of bored of him and he wanted to impress me. 
So girls, don't be afraid to let a guy know that you're bored because it will likely set their game up for you. Probably the worst advice she could give to other females. A man stepping his game up? All that it means is he's trying new tactics to get in bed with you. That's all that it means. It doesn't mean he's gonna marry you. It doesn't mean he values you. Even if he's spending 100, 200, 300 pounds on a date, that's a tactic to get in bed with you. But somehow females find this exciting and then you wonder why no one marries you. See, marriage and all the good things that a man is supposed to bring and provide for you is something that females are just not interested in. I just know that I'm an old head because most of the girls watch this video and were commenting like, okay, where is everybody from? But I watch this video and I'm like, yes, there was a time when this was my type. But now I look at this and I'm like, that one is going to ruin your life. That one is going to run up your therapy bill. And that one is going to ignore your text all week. And then at like 11.38 p.m. on Friday is going to text you, hey, what are you doing tonight? Like my type these days is in the house, inside, not wearing sunglasses in the club, not winking at the camera, no toothpicks in the mouth. Like, you know, I get it, but I know too much. It's not the fact that this female has been through too much. And I think she's a great example to show what other females say when they're finally ready for the good man. It's really the fact that you've been ran through too much from the non-nice guy, from the toxic guy, from the non-consistent guy, the guy that only texts you at 11 p.m. and you go and see him, guy. She's tired of being in these same scenarios over and over again. Sometimes when we're in healthy, loving relationships, we may feel bored, but that's because we're used to being in relationships that are like emotional roller coasters, invoking anxiety, uncertainty. And research actually shows that it is pretty common to be drawn to romantic partners that actually exhibit similar qualities to our primary caretakers. So whatever we saw growing up, that's what we model when we ourselves become adults. Of course, there's truth to what she's saying. Although I am getting very bored of hearing females use this excuse over and over again. Females who get into toxic relationship, it doesn't always indicate that they came from an unhealthy home. You will be surprised that these females are just rebellious and enjoy being rebellious and enjoy the chaos of what comes with being rebellious. We can talk about trauma and past every single time, but what happens is we're not addressing all the other things that females choose to do by themselves without the traumatic past, which is becoming more common now. So if you're used to emotionally unavailable or avoidant people, and then you meet someone that's stable and consistent, you may feel like there's no chemistry or no spark, but the reality is it's just that you're not used to that because that's not what you've seen or experienced growing up. Next time you're feeling bored, just check in with yourself and just read a, a Colleen Hoover book. I don't know, something full of drama that excites you in that way, but leave your relationship alone because let's be honest, it's working out. You're just not used to it, baby. Stop being so available. Stop being so predictable. You're boring. Women need to be what I like to call my version of positive toxic. And I'll give you some examples. Let's just say you and him have a regular routine. And on your way to work every morning, you give him a call. Y'all talk on the phone. At least one of those days out the week, don't call him. What she's really asking for is what she's attracted to. But guess what? It's going to be frustrating when the man actually doesn't marry her, only uses her and leaves her in the same street that she came from. My point is, everything that she's saying that females should do is what females are attracted to. This is why men don't want to be the nice guy, the good guy or have healthy relationships. 
because you females get an adrenaline of unhealthy toxic and inconsistent guys and situations this is what you love this is where you feel you thrive so no man is going to be a standard or give any value when you don't even value those things tell him hey babe i'm so sorry the day got ahead of me it was a crazy morning i was rushing out the house i totally forgot to call you <laughs> Then you're going to cancel one of the date nights. Cancel the date. If y'all was supposed to hang out, maybe y'all was going to go to dinner, you're going to cancel it. You're going to tell him, hey, babe, I know we're supposed to hang out on Wednesday, but I have a work project that I have to hop on. Do you think we can do this another time? <laughs> Checkmate, okay? Then when he says, babe, do you want to hang out on Thursday? Maybe we can do dinner or something. You're going to be like, I would love to hang out with you, but I promised my coworker that we were going to do happy hour. What gets me is... Everything that she's mentioned is everything that females complain about. If you really think about it, females complain about their type being a nonchalant, their type ghosting them, never meeting up with them, always canceling on dates, always dragging the situationship and never taking it into a relationship. Yet, you are mimicking the exact same persona. It's weird, it's like, they want to actually build with such toxic characteristics and have that be sustainable than something that's actually supposed to be sustainable and valuable in a relationship. <laughs> Men love women that are unavailable. You gotta put a you gotta put a little sauce on. You gotta keep his mind wondering. You gotta keep him as tree. This is how he's gonna be stay interested. This is how he's gonna be all over you, okay? This is also gonna program him that being with you is not gonna feel like he's in jail. This is gonna show him that you know how to prioritize things other than him, okay? Men hate feeling like that they're in jail. So this is gonna show him that you have friends, you have other things to do, and this is gonna keep him on his toes. And at this point, we really need to a secret community, y'all because I can't keep telling all y'all this stuff on the internet while the man is listening. The only guys that like it when you take too long to reply, that like it when you go to him in and now, or aren't clingy, or not interested to actually, you know, keep a consistent interaction and communication, are the guys that are not interested in you. They're only interested in the coochie. And what you're doing is you're making it easier for him to not commit to you. I don't think females actually get it. If the man is okay with the fact that this whole situationship is nonchalant, then he was never bothered or interested but in having quick access to your coochie. And that's as much as he wanted and that's as far as he's gonna get. And what you're doing is you're doing him a favor. You know what debate I'm tired of having? why girls like bad boys and that always and have you not noticed that always comes from the guy who's the typical good guy let me tell you why good guys finish last good guys usually finish last because they're not able to be in a relationship and be in a relationship they are for the relationship they are too busy trying to show you why they are such a great guy instead of just being your guy everyone wants to be in a relationship where they feel like that person is their soulmate that person is their person that person understands them nobody wants to be in a relationship with somebody that is just like all you're doing it's constantly trying to oh i know this may sound bad but constantly trying to please me instead of just actually getting to know who i am it's like do you even know who you're trying to please do you here's another factor of what it means what a healthy relationship means to different females She's not interested in the man being good. She's interested in the man pleasing her the way she wants. And a lot of times, good guys or nice guys don't really understand that it's not about higher standards. It's not about doing things the right way for her it's really the opposite and if you ain't clocking it she's not gonna tell you she's just gonna move on to the next guy good guys always want to remind us like i'm such a faithful guy 
I will never cheat on my girl. I'm too loyal. It's like, thank you for the basics. But what else are you? You provide security and 100% we need that. Anybody needs that. Everybody needs that. But it's like, give something else that separates you from every single other guy. You don't do that. You're boring. Sorry, mate. You are boring. And that's grounds to not be wanted. So why doesn't she tell us what makes her different from any other female? If we flip the script, what she's really saying is, if all you men are the same, you're boring, then doesn't that apply for you as well as a female? All of you females want the same thing, do the same thing, sleep with the same type of guy. What are you? You're even worse than a nice guy. Because at least his values and morals are somewhat intact yours ain't so what are you you're asking for things that you're not even you can't even provide a man or be something to a man that other females ain't because you're all the same but you're complaining about the nice guy being the same as the other nice guys like i hate to say this but you guys are boring there is no spice no sauce no nothing it's just goodness goodness I'm not sure if people have seen this video, um, I do have a feeling maybe it has been viewed by some people and some not, but I wanted to react to this because what is wrong with goodness? It's actually crazy to hear a whole adult female complain how good a man is. It just amazes me how in 2024 good is seen as bad and bad is seen as good it's rather biblical every day wake up in the morning and stare at you pure goodness but it's like do you even listen to my stories do you do you even make me laugh do you know how to cook like what else are you other than this guy i'm sorry but that's just my thoughts at the end of the day because i know what it is to lose a good man and regret it and I know what it is to almost do that again with another good man and tighten up. I know what it is to take a look at me because ain't nothing like good self-examination. You see, I had a kind man, a gentle man who was also masculine, loving, caring, supportive. Oh, and I was bored. Ooh, I was bored. I thought everything had to be sparks and all that all the time, just as immature as I could be. And that immaturity didn't come from young age just being immature, selfish. And when it almost happened with the one I have now, taking a good look at myself was exactly what I needed to do. A good look, an honest look. But recognizing my part in that, that was the key for me. And when I saw it happening again, I had to check myself again and be upfront with the man I have now. And it has blessed my life. And it's blessed my man's life because it caused him to take a look at it himself. And baby, when you have both people holding themselves accountable, holding each other accountable. Mm, mm, mm. And one of the other lessons in this is that when I lost that good man, I ended up with a total jerk right after that. Whew, it was horrible. But it was a lesson I needed because I know what it is to lose a good man, end up with a jerk, tighten myself up, and end up with the man that I've been with for 24 years, 21 married. Can't tell me God ain't good. So that's how I know. Do it. added this clip in because I see this is what females want they always find themselves in this same predicament over and over again they never like to learn from their mistakes why the lesson behind those mistakes is you are the problem you are the boring one you are the one that suffers from self-hatred you are the one that hates good and loves bad.
I'm your hostess, Reminate Princess. These are my last thoughts. I wanted to do this compilation as I saw a few clips floating around on TikTok about how healthy relationships are boring. And to me, I think that is just so not true. I don't think healthy relationships are boring. I think the individual is boring and actually has nothing else to offer themselves or the relationship. So they continuously have to seek things outside because of what they lack inside. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Bye.